Hi, I'm Mike, Program Director of PWR Steer, and welcome to the PWR Steer video series. In today's video, we will show you how to do a basic power steering gearbox replacement. Replacing the steering gearbox can seem challenging and complex. This video will review the basic step-by-step -step procedure for getting the job done right. After a complete inspection, we've determined that this vehicle needs a new steering box. With the truck up in the air, you can see that the steering box is leaking, which is why we're replacing it. Before removing it though, you'll want to make sure there is nothing else loose in the front suspension. Quite often, the pitman arm is also worn out, so it's good practice to replace them both at the same time. Look over the entire front suspension, making sure there are not any other parts that might need to be replaced. As you can see here, this vehicle will also need the upper ball joint. After lowering the vehicle back down to the ground, we'll get started. We'll need to remove a few things under the hood to better access the power steering hoses. Begin by turning the steering wheel to dead center as if the vehicle is going in a straight line. Next, secure the steering wheel to keep it from moving in any way. This is very important to prevent clock spring damage affecting the airbag operation. Now, we've raised the vehicle back in the air and we can see that the pitman arm is parallel with the frame. This will be important when we install the new gearbox. Pay particular attention to the coupler connecting the steering column shaft to the gearbox, since it's important to connect it back the same way. If there is a cover over the coupler, just push it up. Back out the bolt holding the coupler onto the gearbox and pry the coupler open. Because we're going to replace the pitman arm, we can disconnect it from the center link. Next, loosen all the bolts holding the gearbox onto the frame. You'll want to wait to remove the hoses until you're sure you'll be able to remove the gear, as sometimes the bolts are so rusted they will distort or round out. If the hoses are already disconnected, things can get pretty messy. Once all the bolts are loose, disconnect the hoses, making sure they are draining into a pan. Now disconnect by prying off the steering coupler from the gearbox. The next step is to completely remove the gearbox from the vehicle with the pitman arm attached. It's important to visually compare the old part with the replacement part. Make sure the ports are the same sizes. In other words, visually confirm that this is the right replacement part. Start the installation of the new gearbox by positioning the replacement box in the center position. First, turn the input steering shaft all the way in one direction. Then, count how many turns it takes to turn it to the other direction, lock to lock. This particular one required three and a quarter turns. So to center the gearbox, turn back one and five eighths turns. Now the gearbox is centered. Now, even though this pitman arm could be reused, for this demonstration we're going to replace it. Double check that the pitman arm is in the right direction. Now you can reinstall the gearbox back on the vehicle. Next, tighten up the mounting bolts and the pitman arm. This is a good time to remove the power steering reservoir because it will need to be cleaned before you refill it. In a lot of cases, the reservoir cannot be cleaned correctly. Take a look at these cutaway examples. As you can see, the mesh in most cases cannot be cleaned. Power steering fluid gets contaminated as parts of your system slowly wear out. Things like bearings, the inside of hoses, gaskets, or seals will deposit tiny particles in your fluid. If the reservoir is contaminated, it will contaminate the system and shorten the life of the new gearbox and the pump. We'll do the job right and install a new reservoir. Just so you understand, 
There is a high pressure line and a low pressure line in the power steering system. The power steering pump sends the fluid to the power steering rack through one hose, a high pressure hose, and it returns to the power steering fluid reservoir through a second hose, a low pressure hose. The hose that sends the fluid back to the reservoir and pump is called the power steering return line. Some power steering systems incorporate a fluid cooler, which is located on the low pressure side of the system. If a cooler is included, the return line runs from the steering gear to the cooler and from the cooler to the reservoir. Remember that the power steering system is a closed loop system, and if the system is open in any way, air will get in. So whether you replace a hose, a pump, a rack and pinion unit, or a gearbox, there's going to be air entering the system. The idea is to get the air out as quickly as we can to prevent it from damaging the replacement part upon startup. Now, fill the reservoir with the OEM recommended fluid. In this case, it's Mercon 5. Next, we need to flush the system by disabling the engine from starting and disconnecting the return line to the pump. Crank the engine over, pushing the old contaminants out through the return line. Once you see clear power steering fluid flowing, reconnect the hose. The system has now been flushed, and you can see how critical this process is for flushing out the old contaminants. You can now reconnect the two hoses with new seals. Now, before starting the engine, turn the wheel lock to lock 10 times. Refill the reservoir if needed. Then start the engine and turn the wheels again lock to lock 10 times, checking the reservoir one last time and checking the system for leaks. Now vacuum bleed the system and if everything looks good, the job is done. For more information on vacuum bleeding, check out our other videos. Let's do a quick recap. Inspect the power steering system and the suspension system. Check belts and hoses for cracks, leaks, or oil contamination, and consider replacing them if they are five years old or older. Compare the new product to the old product. Flush the system with recommended fluid type. Always install a new remote reservoir if applicable. Always reassemble using factory torque specs. Vacuum bleed the system every time a line is open. Thanks for watching our PWR Steer video series, and please check out our other videos. And remember, our products are 100% new, 100% tested, engineered in Memphis, Tennessee.